crucified the Lord of glory. So we thank God that we have come to service again another Wednesday night to worship God, to praise Him, seek His face, and learn of Him. And to give our personal testimony that we are in the true faith, we're in the true church, we serve the one true God, and we're not going anywhere. Amen. Now, uh, in the beginning of the Latter-day Movement, there was a miracle revival in Azusa Street, y'all heard me teach before, Amen. around 1906, 07. And a brother came through, they had a what was called a 24-hour service, lasted three years. How long was Jesus' ministry? Three years. Three years. Now, the Baptists and other secular churches never accepted the Zeus Street Miracle Revival. If you do any of your research, they always say it was a fraud, it was a yeah. man, it was uh, fake. Mm -hmm. But it spread all the way to Europe without the, without the uh, knowledge of a television yeah. or internet service. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at that time, few people, if any, had telephones. So we have to understand the power of the Azusa Street Miracle Revival for those three years, 24-hour service. Some ministers come in, some uh, brethren and sisters come in, they would leave, others would come in, and it was a constant flow for three years. But there was a brother that came in, had, a, had to be sent by God. Yeah. He explained and expressed to the church the importance of water baptism in the name of Jesus and the true knowledge that Jesus was the one eternal God. Yeah. Now prior to that, everybody had the same Catholic church uh, ideology that there was a trinity of gods and the baptism was Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But after that brother expressed that and explained that to the people, then the latter day movement entered in because the final revelation of who God was, and the true plan of salvation was finally introduced back to the church. Prior to that, there was no knowledge of the oneness of God. There was no knowledge of a baptism in Jesus' name. Everything followed, even the Baptists and the uh, Methodists and the Episcopalians and Presbyterians, mm -hmm. all of them still followed the basic yeah. ideology of the Roman Catholic Church, which there was three gods in heaven, and uh, the water baptism, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes. After that revelation, 
there were three dominant leaders, Bishop Mason, Bishop Jones, and Bishop uh, Haywood. They were in one accord until after that brother gave that, 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 that teaching. And then they began to split as they left the Azusa Street Miracle Revival. Bishop Mason formed the Church of God in Christ. Yeah. Bishop Jones formed the Church of God. And Bishop Haywood formed the Pentecost Assemblies of the World, which was the Oneness Church. Now, the Assemblies of God came up underneath Bishop Mason. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Swaggart was a member of the uh, Assemblies of God. But when they found out that he had went with a prostitute and got caught, they shut him down for two years. But because he was such a popular TV icon, I think one of the largest TV ministries at that time in all Christianity, and especially in America, when they shut him down, he refused to accept that penalty and left the Assemblies of God and joined the Baptist Church. He said, well, I found out that the Baptist was the true religion. Yeah, after, after the Assemblies of God set him down for two years, mm -hmm. he, all of a sudden he got a, a clarity of the truth. Yeah. Anytime a preacher cannot maintain his integrity in defending the faith, it's because of one thing. It's not a weakness in the flesh. It's the spirit of unbelief. There has to be a fear of God in every individual who declares his testimony that he serves the one God. Amen. Has to be a cer certain amount of fear there. Right. Otherwise, you would not have a form of discipline. See, discipline comes by having a fear in this context of heaven and hell. If I don't want to go to hell, i got a fear of going to hell, then I'm going to discipline myself that I don't go to hell. Right. So we have to understand what has happened to the Latter-day Church. And I, I often reflect back on... Uh, uh, was that Revelation chapter, is that three and six? I have a few names in Sardis. Yeah. Yeah. Read that right quick. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Now notice what it says. He that hath an ear, let him hear what? What the Spirit saith. Oh, says. not what Prophet Walker say. Not what Jerry Swagger say. Not what Joyce Meyer say. But what the Spirit saith to the church. Uh-huh. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? No, Sardis. Philadelphia. No, I, I want that. Verse 4. Oh, verse four. 4, yeah. Okay. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. I got a few names in Sardis that have not defiled their garments. Now, this is so important. I know we shared this last week. But notice what he said. I have a few names in Sardis that have not defiled their garments. In other words, they haven't backslid. Read. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Now it says, I have a few names inside these who have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white because they have not defiled their garments. Now their garments means their character. I got a few, not a whole lot, but a few. When Bishop Haywood started that movement, there was only a few. He died in early age, some say, of a broken heart. And he's only in his 50s, 51 I think he was. Died of a broken heart. Now, Bishop Mason went on to establish churches all over America. At one time, the largest Pentecostal movement in America was the Church of God in Christ. Now, if you examine them and their quality of character, you'll find that that's not the true Church of God. The true Church of God was established in the Acts 7 chapter. And jump right into verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified. Now, that same Jesus who you crucified put on the cross. Both Lord and Christ. Lord and Christ means God and Messiah. He was both God and Messiah. Or God and man, if you want to use that term. Yeah. Read. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said what unto, shall we do means how do we get saved? Amen. Peter had preached that long sermon to them and telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ and also must have told them about the water baptism because they said, what shall we do? In other words, how do we get saved? Yeah. Read. Then Peter said unto them, repent 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. Remission means removal of sin. Anyone who's not water baptized in the name of Jesus still has his Adamic sins that he was born into on his record. I don't care what kind of life he lived. I ain't never sinned. I ain't never cursed. I ain't never drank no liquor. I ain't never smoked. Amen. I treat everybody right. But if you're not water baptized in Jesus' name, you are not connected to the body of Christ. That is the New Testament order. That can't be rescinded. That can't be changed. Water baptism in the name of, uh, for the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all in the name of Jesus, how they try to baptize now, try to include Acts 2.38 with uh, the Roman Catholic theology of water baptism. It was a Roman Catholic church at the Council of Nicaea, 325, yes. that introduced the three God doctrine to the church for a record and the water baptism, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They took away the baptism in the name of Jesus. Now you can research this over YouTube if you want to research this. Encyclopedia Britannica, water baptism was always in the name of Jesus until the second century. King Encyclopedia of Religion says the same thing. Water baptism was always in the name of Jesus until the time of Justin Martyr, that was the second century. Haitian Encyclopedia, uh, page 88. Haitian Encyclopedia, page 88. The church only recognized, the early church only recognized the baptism in the name of Jesus. Sheriff Herzog, Bible Dictionary of Religion, water baptism in the name of Jesus was used, and the threefold name of Matthew 28, 19, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was not used by the early church but rather in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, or Jesus Christ. The time formula was never used by the early church. So that shows you there had to be a change. And if you research the Catholic Encyclopedia, I think that's volume three. But you can look up in the concordance under water baptism yeah. and find it. It says their church acknowledged that they changed water baptism. Right. The Catholic Church owned the Encyclopedia. So again, now we... Uh, we have some questions. I want to get that first question. How can anyone tell you what church to attend? How can anyone tell you to what church to attend? Well, I, I've said it over many times over you too. You, you go to the church that the Bible has already established. All right, amen. Now, we all this established. Now, the New Testament church was founded in Acts second chapter, verse 38. But baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says they remain steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. They didn't divert. They didn't split off like they have in secular Christianity today. No, they followed the apostles' doctrine. Give me a Galatians chapter 1. Jump right in at verse 6. Now they said, how can you tell you in the right church? Well, I'm, we're going to show you. Amen. Galatians 1 and 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him from the grace of Christ to another gospel. Now watch, another doctrine, another teaching, uh-huh. Which is not another. Now the apostle says it's not another. It's not another teaching, it's not another doctrine. Amen. Well, the doctrine of the apostles was the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The apostles' doctrine taught that Jesus was God come in the flesh. Hold your place right there and give me Matthew, I mean, uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Yeah, Jesus. What we are talking about is how can you tell if you're in the right church? Very simple. Read the Bible. All right, Father. But if you ain't got a preacher who's teaching you the Bible, it's the same as you trying to read Chinese. Praise God. You don't understand a word that, the, that they're saying. Hey, read. And without controversy, without great, controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Notice what he says here. Great is the mystery. What's a mystery? A mystery is something that you can't solve. Yeah, right. Great is the mystery of godliness. How can God be Father and Son at the same time? It's a mystery. How do you know it's a mystery? The Bible says it's a mystery. All right. All right. What's a mystery? Some things you can't solve. All right, Prophet. Can you figure it out? No. That's why Paul wrote and said it's a mystery. Yes. I think he says it's a great mystery. Yes. Great is the mystery of Godness. God is what? Manifest in the flesh. Now wait a minute. No, Son of God will manifest in the flesh. 
God was manifest in the flesh. He didn't say the Son of God was manifest in the flesh. God became the flesh. Uh huh. Justified in the spirit. Yes. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Seen of angels. He was in heaven. Preached to the Gentile on earth. Uh huh. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the world Re by some, not everybody. Uh huh. Received up into glory. And went back up to glory. This same Jesus, whom you crucified, he was dead. God has made both Lord and Christ. Yes. So I'm saying, brother and sister, how can you tell if you're in the right church? Go back to Galatians again, chapter 1. Jump right in again at verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, uh -huh. which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. Wait, there be some that trouble you. In other words, there's some coming in the name of Jesus, and they're going to trouble you, they're going to fool you, they're going to trick you. Read. And will pervert the gospel of Christ. Uh -huh. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you. Now, angel from heaven, if you look in Revelation to the seven churches, it says to the angels of the seven churches, it's talking about pastors. In this context, he's talking about a pastor that claims to come from heaven. Yes, if any other pastor claimed to come from heaven, preached you any other gospel than what the apostle preached, read that. That which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. He didn't say pray for him. He said let him be accursed. So I'm saying uh, to that person who wrote that letter over you too, how can you tell that you're in the right church? All you got to do is read the Bible. Amen. But you got to use line upon line and precept on precept. Amen. And you got to have a teacher who can rightly divide and not wrongly divide the word of truth. The apostles all baptized in the name of Jesus. Acts 2nd chapter 38, Peter baptized Cornelius, or rather the uh, Jews in, in Jesus' name. Acts the 10th chapter, Peter baptized Cornelius, the first Gentile, yes. in the name of Jesus. In Acts, I think it's 19 and 5, yes. Apostle Paul baptized uh, those disciples who had been baptized wrong under John baptism, he baptized them over again in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I think in the 20th chapter of the book of Acts, Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in the name of the Lord Jesus. No apostle ever used the formula, I therefore baptize you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They never did that. Nope. Because what are you doing? You're, you're, you're taking away from the name of salvation. Neither is salvation any other, for there's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. And that saving name is Jesus. Matthew 1, and he shall save his people from their sins. That makes him the Savior. Amen. So once we understand that Jesus is a Savior, and the legal or the legality of the church rests on the name of Jesus. So when you get baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you don't have any legality there because there's no connection with the Lord. Yeah. And salvation is from Jesus. So therefore we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. If you baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the name of salvation is removed. Yeah. So therefore you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So how can you tell if you're in the right church? First of all, if you baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's the wrong church. <laughs> If you believe in the Trinity of God, that's the wrong church. If you believe Mary is the mother of God, you're in the wrong church. Hallelujah. How is Mary going to be the mother of God? Mary died, and God, he never stopped living. He always was. So, there's so many misconceptions because people are not properly taught. So how can you tell you're in the right church? If you read your Bible, line upon line, or better still, if you follow true light, amen, we'll guide you in that path of righteousness. Okay, give me, I'm going to close this out in Ephesians chapter 4. I think I want you to jump right into verse 14. Watch close. The apostle writing here. Yeah. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Every wind of doctrine. By the slightest men. Clever preachers who tell you, Joyce Myers, T.D. Jakes, yeah. Kenneth Cope, all them devils telling you, oh, this is the way to heaven. And uh, don't worry about nothing. All you got to do is repeat these words and you're you on your way to heaven. Again, brothers and sisters, that's a lie. 
Anytime a preacher takes away your personal responsibility in serving God, you know you ain't going nowhere with Jesus. Anytime anyone or any type of organization tell you there's not rules to follow, don't you join that organization. And if you apply to the Christian church, yes, there are rules you must follow. I've shared with someone the other day. When God told Lot, I'm going to deliver you from this wicked place because I'm getting ready to destroy it. Here's a pathway of freedom. But don't look back. Now, it, it's an important question you understand. Why did God tell him, I'm going to put you on the pathway to freedom, but I don't want you to look back? What is so insignificant about me having to look back to maybe see the fireworks? <laughs> Praise God. No, don't look back. Why? It establishes a code of responsibility and a code of obedience. Amen. You're on the road to freedom, but I'm going to give you an instruction to do something. Now, you're going to obey the instructions? Well, no, I don't see the importance of it. All right. His, what, what happened to his wife? She was turned to a pillar of salt. Don't look back. That's an instruction God gave to Lot and his family to show a, a, a relationship to a hierarchy. In other words, you've got to show some type of respect for me, so I'm going to tell you to do something maybe you don't want to do. See? If he tells you not to wear jewelry and makeup, I don't see nothing wrong with it. But if he tells you not to do it, you don't do it. I don't see nothing wrong with women wearing pants as long as they're bought in the women's section. The pants is pants and the dress is a dress. All right. Yeah. Men don't wear dresses. Right. In this day and time, women wear dresses. And that didn't sound everybody wore a robe, but I said before, if you examine Deuteronomy 2 and 2 and 5, women should not wear that pretend to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. It, the woman's robe had to be different than the man. Otherwise, that passage of Scripture would not be in the Scripture. So it's showing a difference. There has to be a separation, and it has to be done by obedience. And brothers and sisters, anytime someone tells you you ain't got to obey nothing, just read a Bible verse, you're on your way to hell. Amen. Get out of that church. Hurry up and quit. Be quick about it. All right. Now, uh, I think you covered that. Uh, I'm in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, yeah. Finish that. And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Lie in wait to deceive you, uh-huh. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him and to all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom all the whole body is fitly joined together and compacted, by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, make an increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, uh -huh. that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles You walk. don't live as other Gentile or worldly people live. You don't smoke, drink, tell dirty stories. You don't go fellowship with them when you know what they believe and, and, and they know what you believe. You don't fellowship with them. I don't care who it is. You can only be courteous to those, but you don't have no fellowship with them because they are not like you and you are not like them. And it will prove itself. Anytime a person is so caught up in an affection with a relative or a loved one that he wants to be with them, and uh, if I have to leave my church to be with them, well, go ahead and leave your church and be with them. But they ain't got no heaven to send you to. All right. But they got a hell to take you with them to. All right. Amen. That's not to get that point. Yeah. Read. In the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Now, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them. Nobody's teaching them. So therefore, the person asks, how do you know if you're in the right church? Very plain. If you are taught holiness, which is the rule God established to change a character and make that character Christ-like, you know whether or not you're in the right church. If you don't have any type of discipline in, in, in the fact of self-denial, well, I, I, I drink a six-pack every night when I get off work, but I don't go nowhere. You're still in error. Because you're still getting drunk. Staggering does not mean necessarily that you're drunk. 
You could drink a swallow beer and go to sleep. But why did you drink that swallow beer? It don't taste like iced tea. It's showing you because it's so fun. But you drink it because of something craves about it, and you ain't gonna take no one swallow. You ever seen that 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 uh, that ad on potato chips? You can't eat just one. No, you don't take no one swallow and put it down. Loose here. Loose here. Amen. You drink the whole can. And another one if it's there. Why? Because there's something in your flesh that desires that seemingly false tranquility that alcohol or any other stimuli gives you. All right, but the only stimuli you're supposed to get is from the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the promise that God gave to you by belief in God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I said before, I've I, I never been influenced by other people. I don't know how to play by myself. Amen. Friends ain't never been that important to me. Yeah. Everybody wants friends, but it ain't never been that important to me. Right. I learned how to make myself happy. In church, holiness, you got to listen to me. You got to learn how to make your own self comfortable and at peace with your own self because you're in holiness. Because the devil tried to trick you out of holiness. Yeah, right. And if you listen to him, he'll trick you out of it. Right. Especially a loved one. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Especially a close friend. Yeah. Oh, that's my close friend. My play sister. Yeah, my play buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you better learn how to not to play with that everybody. <laughs> you gotta get that Holy Ghost in. You're gonna play, play with the Holy Ghost. Right. But, but make sure you're playing fair. All right, <laughs> All right so I, I covered that, I think, pretty well. Uh, did, did you say uh, uh, teaching them? Or did that go in there? Yes. Uh, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Uh -huh. But ye have not so learned Christ. Now that's where I want to stop. You don't learn worldly customs in a holiness church. Amen. That's what we call the holiness church. Amen. But we don't practice the sins of Satan. Amen. That's why we're in holiness. All right, then get the next question. What makes a lesbian pastor more sinful than a pastor that lies, cheats on taxes, gets drunk, commits adultery, etc.? No difference. They're both going to hell. Come on. That ain't a hard question to answer. Give me a Romans chapter 1. You, you, you try to make it complex there. There ain't no difference in, in a lesbian pastor and one who smokes, drink. No. There is no difference. Hallelujah. Lesbian may not drink uh, smoke liquor, but she's doing something wrong. Amen. Otherwise, that's, well, that's why she, she's a lesbian. Amen. And nowadays, they, they're not afraid. Nope. Yeah. Man, they introduce some. I'm watching CNN News today. Fox News today. I'm laying on the couch watching Fox News and all the craziness going on in the world. And here's an anchor, Fox News, and the other, uh, it was three panel, and the other commentator said, I was so glad, him, I was so glad to meet your husband yesterday. He's such a nice man. He said, oh, thank you. He's a man. Another I could say, I'm so glad to meet your husband. I said, what? You mean to tell me he's funny too? Great day. Is anybody right left in the world? Is that those in the church? <laughs> you don't know what you're watching. And I've been watching his anchor. He seemed like a normal fellow to me. I was so glad to meet your husband. And he smiled and said, oh, thank you. Goodness. Uh, goodness sake. Mm. Oh, uh, well, honey, you got my razor? <laughs> Come on. Y'all missed that one. Girl. Come on. <laughs> All right. No, oh, Romans. I mean, Romans, right? Yes, uh, Jump right in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now wait, the wrath of God or anger of God or judgment of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Now, you, you, that connects with what we just uh, uh, taught about the right church. Yeah. Amen. Whether you're not you're in the right church. Anytime you're going to a false church, you're going to receive the wrath of God one form or another. 
I was thinking about today about the shallow project. Amen. And and I saw that caption the other day over the news how they jumped from thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month rent in Florida to thirty three hundred dollars a month. And they're trying to get some court to overturn it, but they can't because there's no regulation yeah. how a, a landlord may want to raise the rent. Yeah. And he said, well, the standard of living going up, so we're going up. Yeah. And it's the same thing in South Carolina because Florida, South Carolina, and I think Arizona are two most expensive states to live in in America. Mm -hmm. So if they raise the rent in Florida that much, they raise the rent here. And I was thinking about people who left here Got an apartment, paying a car note, yep. paying an electric bill, yep. paying a cell phone bill. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna throw in the groceries. All right. All right. But you turn your back on shallow because you want to be a part of your world. Fine. Be a part of your world. And when the push comes to shove and you pick up that phone and want to come back to shallow, uh, uh, well, you can come back to the church. But no, that comfort zone, uh uh. No, that, that's wrong. <laughs> best thing you can do is pick up your cross, come back here, and, and let's all of us go to heaven together. All right. But no. Being a person makes a foolish move. And, and I'm saying in this case a school teacher, but a school teacher ain't making that kind of money, y'all. That's right, brother. See, school teachers don't make money like a doctor. Amen. Amen. So you got a car note, paying that heavy duty rent, now probably $2,500 a month. And you got cell phone and your auto taxes. You got to pay them because if they stop you, and you ain't got none to take your car. So, so all of those expenses, and God knew this. And what about gas? Going back and forth to work. I stopped the gas station today and put forty-two dollars worth of gas in the car, and I had a quarter of a tank. You know where it jumped to? I got a half a tank now. $42. Man, I seen a time when $12 of hot tests would fill up your gas tank. I'm done when we had the church on, at, on East Road. I mean, uh, uh, on Seven Mile Road. $12 to fill up a Lincoln. Now look at today. $42 and, and I get a quarter of a tank added. <laughs> or should I say in addition to. And it jumped yesterday, three cent more today, and it said it's gonna get worse before it get better. Because you know what? They got the devil in there. Another thing, how can you tell who's the right one, who's the wrong one? Biden is for sodomy, yes. lesbian behavior. He got all kinds of sodomites and lesbian in his uh, cabinet. He's for Planned Parenthood, and I just shared they killed since where we weighed 30 million babies have been killed, and now they're trying to pass a law where you can take an unborn child, or rather a child that's newly born, and, and discuss with the parents whether to kill it. They call it trimester. Yeah. That's when the baby is nine months, born, fingers, everything, heartbeat, everything. Yeah. But a heartbeat after six weeks, five, six weeks, you got a heartbeat. That's right. yeah. So the world is so upside down now because of sin. Sin corrupt. And this man Biden is supposed to be a, a devout Catholic. Fine. Yeah. But you for baby murder. Yep. You for same-sex marriage. Trump is against baby murder. Lord. Tried to yeah. close plan, yeah. Planned Parenthood. Yeah. And tried and did stop Don't Ask, Don't Tell about sodomites and lesbians being in the military service. Yeah. See, when I was in the service, if they found somebody who was like that, Man, they, they give you what they call a bad conduct discharge. That means you can't draw no unemployment, you can't draw no social security, mm. nothing. You get a bad conduct discharge. Mm. So the world has so digressed into sin. And this is why the Holiness Church seems like a drop in the ocean of unbelief, and we are. But nevertheless, God's going to have somebody who will lift up that blood-stained banner and march with it. And we are not going to back down, church. We're going to carry that, carry that banner. We're going to carry our cross. And we're not going to get discouraged. And when you feel the spirit of depression on you, listen, you start singing your song. 
Oh, hurry up and get open up that Bible and get, get you in one of them letters that David wrote. All right. How do you say, my Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want? I Now, you know when he wrote that? After Absalom had chased him yeah. to the mountain. Yeah. And the Bible said he fled for his Please. life. Yeah. And Absalom was of the devil and David's of God. Yeah. Why did he have to run? God was trying to show a point. Go to the mountain. Why? Because then you're close to me. Amen. The mountain was a special place for back in that dispensation of time. Like you run into the church today. He went to the mountain. Fled for his life. And there he wrote that psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see how deep that is? I told him before, he's telling God, look, <laughs> you're responsible for me. All right. Amen. You're my shepherd, and I don't have to worry. I shall not want. You see the psychological factor there? Yes. Lord, I'm in trouble, but I'm looking up to you. All right. Amen. What you going to do about it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And David believed what he was writing. Yeah. Yea, though the walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear. For thou art with me. Amen. And when the first messenger came to David, David didn't say how the battle is going. Nope. He said, well, how about my son? My son? Now his son had rebelled against him to yeah. usurp his authority, which is death penalty. Yeah. That's right. How's my son? Yeah. And he sent orders. When you catch my son, don't, don't harm him. But Joab had another idea. Sure when he saw Absalom hanging between the earth and heaven. Yeah. Now that signified something. He saw him in that helpless position, running through with his sword. Yep. Killed him, graveyard dead. And the second emissary came to David, he wouldn't answer him, because nope. he knew. Wouldn't answer. The third one came and said, your son lied dead in the field, just like the rest of your enemies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. David wept sword. Yeah. Yeah. Because he loved his son. Yeah. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, you can love someone ever so much. But if they go against God too far and too often, sometimes God will draw the line. And I don't care how you pray. If God gets angry enough. So it's good enough now to pray for your loved ones and beg them come into holiness before it's too late. Because the world is really heading into a calamity as the world has never seen before. And just as sure they got that crazy man over there in Russia, yes. and just as sure as they push him in that corner, he's going to cut loose them atomic bombs. Shows them here. See? If they push him in the corner, or don't assassinate him first. Because that man's crazy. Yeah. And like a, like a lion, you can have a whole army, machine gun and everything, but put that lion in a corner. All right. And then you come too close to him and see what happens. Right, you better start shooting. Right. He's sure going he sure to try to attack you. I don't care how many people he is. When you corner an animal, an animal will fight back, and that man's an animal. Sure is. So the only thing you can do is for the church to keep on praying. Yeah. None of these things go come against humanity because we still have unsaved loved ones. And we pray every night for our unsaved loved ones. So I think we answered those questions pretty, pretty fair. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, give me a... Uh, Read that, that second question again. What makes a lesbian pastor more sinful than a pastor that lies, cheats, right. or attacks? Right, and we stopped in verse 18. Now jump right into around verse 21, is it? Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Watch. But became vain in their imaginations. Became vain in their own way of thinking, and their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened. Read. Professing themselves to be wise. Well, oh, I love that part. <laughs> Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. They were genuine idiots. Yeah. Read. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. Changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. In other words, saying, I'm a man in a woman's body, and I'm a woman in a man's body. Uh-huh. Into an image made like to corruptible men. Yes. Into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Nasty things, uh-huh. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. The lust of their own heart. Now lust means a sexual sin in this context. Homosexuality is not a man holding hands with another man walking through the park. All right. Yes. Teach. Lesbianism is not two women holding hands with each other and going to a, a picnic. Mm -hmm. It's when 
they lust or have a sexual desire that complements the sin. Sodomy is not a, a, a sin until you commit sodomy. Lesbian is not a lesbian until you commit a lesbian act. Eight. Three. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Dishonor their own body between themselves. Watch. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Are you listening, uh, YouTube viewer? Yes. Uh huh. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections. Vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which was against nature. Wait a minute. The women changed the natural use to that which is against what? Nature. How many times have I told you it's against the biological factor of human existence? There's no way that you can prove that lesbianism, sodomy, is correct. Amen. By using biological factors. A man is a man and a woman is a woman, and you can't change that. Jeez. Ain't no surgeon can change that. Amen. Where does it come from? Imagination. Yes. Amen. I imagine I'm a woman. Until it gets into a corrupt uh, obsession. Yes. And you, cause you can go on something too long and you, pretty soon you're going off on the deep end. And that's what has happened to these, what they call now, they don't call themselves gay, they call them trans. Yes. Mm. Call whatever you want, you're crazy. All right, brother. Amen. 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 And the medical science, uh, 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 medical association in 1970 said homosexuality was a mental illness. Yes. Yeah. Was it the university? John Hopkins University? Yes. Yes, sir. A 30-year study mm -hmm. and said the same thing not six, seven years ago. Homosexuality is a mental illness. You can't dwell on something too long. Pretty soon you go off on the deep end. Oh, here's a man saying I'm a woman. And all you got to do is look in the mirror. That's right. Oh, well, I'll get rid of that. That still ain't going to change nothing. That's right. Make you a freak. Amen. Amen. I this freak. That's all going to change. Doctor can't make nothing, amen. Duracell can't help you. Amen. Not if you <laughs> have a woman. Right. Woman don't want no Duracell. Amen. Well, I think I went pretty close to where I wanted to go. Lord, don't let me feel. I don't want to be your man when my way sleep. Holy Christ. Jesus for being our God. Thank you for the promise that you great promise you made to us that uh, you would uh, come back and, and get your people if we obey you. So I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And also give honor to our great prophet, fearless Lord, yes. Prophet Bishop Faith Walker. Standing on the back of the Lord. Beautiful that lady Mother Walker and all the household of faith. And powerful teaching uh, tonight was certainly a blessing to my soul. Just uh, to let it, let the church know that we are in the right church. We're following the doctrine of the apostles that um, uh, I believe the Bible says in the book of uh, Timothy 4 and 16, 2 Timothy, uh, that, uh, that we are to continue in the doctrine. In doing this, we'll both save ourselves and them that hear us. So, you know, his, his prophet also said that uh, these people are in the wrong church, and he brought these uh, questions that came forth from 
outsiders. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe they maybe they want to know, but it's good that we have the true man of God to tell them what they need right. to know. And then, uh, uh, I know when I was seeking the truth, I, I was able to find, uh, God showed me the great man of God, and I've been here, and I was planning on staying, as uh, Elder Kenya uh, mentioned, uh, no, no sense in going anywhere, we're going to stick around and see what the end is going to be. Oh, right. The prophet came uh, to us in Revelation 3 and 3, talking about that few uh, in Sardis, and we are that few. You see, our church is not a great sum of people, but prophet also made mention, let us know that God is not involved in numerical equations. Uh, the, the, the world is, and that's why they have uh, the devil as their God, and they are able to buy and sell and do all that. But what is going to be the end? That's why we're here, because we know what the end is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> With Christ forever in heaven. And that's why I'm sticking and staying. That's why if anybody comes to me with anything other than what my father has taught, you are liar. And you can go somewhere with those men. So, you know, it's such a blessing to stay and be, be here and stay and see all the beautiful children, all the beautiful faces. Thank God for all the blessings that He's blessed us with. Let's stand and be dismissed. Lift up our hearts, my hands toward heaven. May the Lord watch between me and thee, while we're absent, one from another. In Jesus' name. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. God. Till we meet.